So this is the first session and we are going to start with descriptive statistics. And uh, let's jump to JASP. So it is advisable to uh, keep your JASP open and perform whatever functions or actions I am doing in my software on your hand also. So you also have hands-on experience and you gain confidence from that. So the, the first module is descriptive statistics and th there are multiple things we can do over here. So some are box plot, scatter plot, QQ plot. That is to check the normality, which I have explained earlier. Then we have pie chart and under statistics we have, so I'll generally now term it as stats. So it's easier. We have mean, median, mode, standard deviation, variance. So variance is the square of standard deviation. So you should be able to recall all these things very easily. The minimum of the thing, uh, minimum value of the data set, maximum value of the data set, the range, that is the maximum minus minimum, the sum, that is the total sum of all the data points. Then we have quartiles. So this may be new interquartile range, which is denoted as IQR that may be new. Then we have standard error of mean. So it is uh, short formed as S E mean. Then we have some skewness and kurtosis. So let me define these things for your recap. So it is easier for you uh, to use JASP later. So the mean is obviously very simple. It's the average of the values, the, the median. So uh, this is the point to make for all the data sets it, or for all the actions of all, all, all the parameters which we have over here, mean, median, mode, etc. Some of them do not require our data to be in a proper increasing order. Some other will require. So if we are going to check the median, if we want to check uh, the, the quartiles, then we definitely want our data to be in an increasing order of values. So in that case, um, the median will be the, the central value or the middle value of our data set. And, and our data set has been ordered from smallest to the largest value. So that is the condition. And median is somewhat robust parameter because it is less sensitive to outliers. That is, if we have very uh, skewed data, then also the median will be same for less skewed data. So that is uh, a robustness check uh, parameter for us. Then we have mode. So that is the most frequent value which appears in our data set. It can be it can be one or there can be multiple mode. Then the standard deviation. So it is like how close our values are from the mean. So higher standard deviation indicates that the values are dispersed over some wider range. Lesser value of standard deviation means it is dispersed over smaller or data set or data points are close to the mean. The variance is the square of the standard deviation. So if I my standard deviation is seven, the variance will be uh, 49. Then we have standard error of the mean. So it is very simple. It's very much similar to what we have as standard deviation. So we find out the mean first and then take the standard value of those. So it's that. Then we have uh, uh, IQR or quartiles. So the quartiles are when we have defined our the data or put our data in an increasing order, then we have multiple points. So the middle value is the median that is same as the second quartile and the first quartile will be. So after making the second quartile, if we have, let's say hundred points. So the second quartile will not be defined directly. That is the median because we have exactly 50 in the first half and exactly 50 in the other half. So there is no exact middle value. So in that case, we'll take the average of 50 and 50 first and the, the, that value will be the median for us and uh, second quartile also. And in, uh, and to find the, the first quartile, the first half will be used and the middle value or the median of that first half is the first quartile. Again, there is no exact middle value. So we'll take the 25th and the 26th data point and take the media, uh, mean of those. And that is the first quartile. Similarly, for the third quartile, we'll take the second half of our data set and uh, the data set that starts from 50 first to 100. And again, the 75th and 76th mean will be the third uh, quartile for us. And if we have odd number of data points, we can just directly take the median, which is the central part. Then the, the important thing over here is that when we take the first half, we ignore the median point. That is the second quartile. We ignore that in the first. So if we have nine points, then the fifth is the, the median uh, data point. 
So the first half will only uh, consist one to four, and second half will consist uh, six to nine. And if we want to define the first quartile, then we need to take the average of second and third. And you understand that if we if that exact data point has come up, then we need to ignore that in the other half. Then that's all. Uh, there is one more that is MAD. And MAD is defined as me median absolute deviation. So we'll see that in our uh, JASP also. So that's all. Skewness is uh, also there. So let's define skewness also. So the skewness is how our data is skewed from normal distribution, or so how it is shifted uh, from normal distribution. And we we know that if the normal is symmetric. So mean, median, and mode are same for. Uh, normal distribution while we can have negative skewness value or positive skewness value. So negative skewness value means our mean is larger than the median and positive skewness means my mean is going to be smaller than my median. So I can show you some graph also from a textbook and you can also use the same textbook Amitabha Mitra. So this is my symmetric which is normally distributed where mean, median and mode are uh, concurrent while in negatively skewed distribution, my mean is lesser than median and my distribution distribution is skewed towards the right from the mean uh, from my normal and for positively skewed distribution, my median is smaller than mean or we can say mean is larger than median. That is better to say in that terms and my distribution is skewed towards left of my original normal distribution. And for positively skewed distribution, my skew coefficient will be positive value. And in negatively skewed, my skewness coefficient will be a negative value. For symmetric distribution, the skewness co coefficient will be exactly zero. So we'll also verify these values in our um, sample. So that's one thing. And another is uh, kurtosis. So kurtosis is defined so it's also very much similar to what we have as in normal distributions. It's also defined with respect to normal, but it is describing how our tails are. So, uh, so skewness was the description of how the total distribution is, while kurtosis only describes how our tails are. So it, uh, the tails are heavier or lighter than the normal distribution. And for normal distribution, the kurtosis value is zero exactly. For positive, kurtosis means my peak is higher than the normal distribution and negative kurtosis means my peak is le lesser than normal distribution. And there are multiple ways we, which we can define kurtosis and infer from our chart. So uh, if it is more sharp or the peak is more close to each other or my data points are very much close to mean and median, then it is positive. And if my data is more separated or spaced out or wider, then it is negative. So it also means like flat or more sharp sharp uh, peak so we can also define that in multiple ways so that's uh, one thing and uh, i'll show you these things in uh, jasp now so this is where we ended last time so i have taken villages so these are the number of villages and these are the district id so this was my data district id and the villages as so then i have taken a very large data set that's because we can have more better estimation of the values a small data set will not provide us a uh, better estimation. So that's why. So we have a uh, box plot, scatter plot, and distribution plots, QQ plot over here, pie chart. Uh, and these are very much understood. I, not, I do not need to define those things. In statistics, we have quartiles over here, standard error of mean, standard deviation, MAD. So MAD was median absolute uh, deviation. IQR was interquartile range. This is range that is minimum minus maximum variance. MAD robust, so it is more robust uh, parameter of MAD. MAD is all, uh, like obviously uh, a, a robust parameter because it takes median into account. Then we have standard deviation and over here we have mean, median, mode, sum. I can just click on them and the values will come up. I do not need to refresh also, they, it automatically refreshes. And in distribution, we have skewness and kurtosis. So I have defined all the things over here. In the next video, we'll start going into more details of box plot. In the previous video, I'll, I have 
uh, shown you how to edit, but that was not uh, properly visible. So it was not recorded. So uh, I can go back and show you this. So on the my data uh, over here, I can just double click. It will open my data, data in uh, Excel and uh, let me change some value. So I earlier I changed the value for the first data point value from 391 to 400. Now I'll change it from 400 to 5, 450 and click save. And that 450 has already come up over here. So that's how I can change the values and copying the, the tables. So I can go to descriptive statistics over here, copy it and go to word file and paste it over here. And that comes perfectly. So that's how we can copy paste. From next video, we'll go into more details of box plot. So I'll I'll explain how what what all different things we can infer from box plot. So that's more important. Just making a box plot is useless. So uh, we'll go into more details. Thank you. Keep practicing.